Why did you say rude? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Faustina Parish. Monday, November 1st, we celebrate the solemnity of all saints. While not a holy day of obligation this year, we are happy to offer Holy Mass both at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. On Tuesday, November 2nd, we'll be celebrating our annual Mass of Remembrance at 6 p.m. This Mass will remember all the faithfully departed, most especially those who have died since last All Souls Day. Today's Mass intention is for the repose of the soul of Teresa Rinkevich. Thank you for your attention. Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, Glory and Praise to Our God. server Mantle Williamson to come up. Or to come over, I should say. <laughs> and I'm going to be so 
blessing upon you. Okay, Madeline? May our Lord Jesus Christ come upon you. And I want to thank you for saying yes to being an altar server to assist the priest, the deacon, and everyone on the altar. You're going into a beautiful little vocation that the Lord has called you to. And so again, you are a child of God, and now you're going to serve Jesus in a very special way. May he bless you today and always in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And guess what? Just because you're a new altar server, you're getting a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Where can I tell Father Brian? <laughs> Madeline, thank you again for saying yes, and you're with the excellent teacher there, Juliana. Let's begin as always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and you come in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory for salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the book of Deuteronomy, Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you, and thus have a long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and, pro and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, 
the God of your fathers, to give, a, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to the heart these words which, which I enjoin on you today, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he was offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests, but the word of the oath which has taken after the law appoints a son, who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Before I even begin with my little homilet here, I want that young man to stand up who did the readings. Where is he? You were so, what's your first, what's his first name? Michael. Michael, Michael you were so good, I'm thinking I'm going to let you do my homily too. I'll just sit down. But you know, to say Deuteronomy and Rabbinical, you took command of those readings. Excellent. Get them down for a future lecture. <laughs> now listen, I'm very scared today because all these people dressed up. As we say in the valley, I'm a scared. I see a nun up there in the choir loft. I, oh, I have to behave now. I see Father Nash and Father Brian and Father Sixtus all dressed up. I'm afraid of all you. <laughs> and guess what? The rest who did not dress up, I love your costumes. <laughs> you know, Deacon Florian and I, I didn't call him this morning, but look, we're dressed in the same costume too. We match. <laughs> My dear people, Artis Whitman was a famous author. You can find her articles in many popular magazines. One of those articles, she describes the moving episode from her own personal life. Her son had died a few months earlier, and she was having a hard time dealing with her son's death. One night, her college-age granddaughter and her granddaughter's boyfriend decided to try to bolster her spirits. So she invite, they invited her to go with them to a nightclub. To their delight, artists did accept Everything went along very well. They were having a delightful time until the band played an old favorite song that reminded her of her son. Tears rolled down her cheeks and she began to weep silently. At that moment, two young people did such an incredible, beautiful thing for her. Spontaneously, they both reached out and gathered her hands into their own. There, the three of them sat, their hands locked in love and affection. It was a beautiful healing experience for artists. She felt protected in the circle of safety and a place of love. Commenting on the experience, she wrote, It's not surprising that heaven comes down to touch us when we find ourselves safe 
in the heart of another person. Then she recalled something that the Indian poet Tagore wrote to a friend when he himself was in need. He said, and I quote the Indian prophet, after you had, ta after you had taken leave, I found God's footprints on my floor. After you had taken your leave, I found God's footprints on my floor. That story fits in perfect with today's scripture readings in the gospel. It underscores the point that love of God and love of neighbor are closely linked. In fact, they are so closely linked that you cannot separate them. They're like two sides of the same coin. When you find one, you find the other. Touching on this point, the Apostle John writes in his first letter, Whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. There's also a popular saying that expresses this truth graphically, and it says, I sought my soul, but my soul I could not see. I sought my God, but my God eluded me. I sought my brother, and I found all three. Better people, the gospel today is really a lesson that we all need to learn and to really put into our hearts. Because again, love of God and love of neighbor, and to do with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, our very being, is what Jesus is asking all of us every day. Difficult as it could be, we have to do it. Because Jesus is asking us. That's what he preached about. For those three years of his public ministry, he focused on the virtue of love and forgiveness. And can we live it out every day? Maybe not 100%, but Jesus is challenging us to do the very best we can, humanly speaking. Again, it's an opportunity for us to live the lessons of Jesus Christ. And especially to the young people here today. You know, I have to admit to all of you too, I love Halloween. I always did as a kid. You know why? Besides getting candy, it got money too. Do they still give money out? No! Boy, things have changed. <laughs> but you know what? It's an opportunity, I think, for all of us. And I always said this. I know there's a religious aspect connected with this. But I think for one day, it's an opportunity for us to leave reality and to be something different. To be something different. And especially this year, after we've gone through two years, I'm in church, but two years of pandemic, now you can really celebrate. You can celebrate this day, and please, for all of you tonight, be careful, be safe, be safe. That's most important. But celebrate that day with your family, your friends. But again, it's an opportunity to really, really leave reality and be something that maybe, maybe in the future you want to be. I don't see anybody dressed as a priest, though. <laughs> huh? <laughs> But we'll see, we'll work on that. But anyway, to do this, to love God and love of neighbor, is the hallmark of all of us. To have forgiveness and mercy in our lives is the hallmark of who we are as followers of Jesus Christ. You know, I'm gonna share a story with you and it's probably typical of all your families too or friends you know, when I was growing up, there was a little conflict in my family, too, with my mother and her sisters. And when my grandmother died, it wasn't the best uh, situation at first. And there were years where they didn't speak because of, you know, when someone dies, there's a, an agreement with a will and all that. And uh, it was a lesson that we all learned. But my mother and her sisters and one brother didn't talk for a couple years. And you know what? They finally decided one day to bite the bullet and say, let's call each other, let's get together. And after they got together, they embraced each other, they looked at each other, because I was in high school. They looked at each other and they said, you know what, us damn Italians are so stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> and we had such an opportunity, they had an opportunity to come together 
and they live the gospel today. Life is too short. And so love of God and love of neighbor comes from the heart, comes from the heart. And after that lesson, my family, their family, my mother's family became so close. Sometimes it was sickening. <laughs> but you know what? It was an opportunity to come together. I'm going to say this, and I truly believe this. When we go to see God face to face, I think he's going to ask us three questions. Did you love God? Did you love yourself? And did you love one another? If we could answer yes to those three questions, and even if we can't, if we're going to try to live them, then we can inherit everlasting life. Again, the opportunity to live the gospel today is an opportunity to see the face of Jesus Christ in one another. To see the face of Jesus Christ in one another. I'm going to conclude with this thought. And it's inscribed on the eastern entrance of Rockefeller Center in New York City. And it reads, man's ultimate destiny depends not on whether he can learn new lessons or make new discoveries or conquests but on his acceptance of the lesson taught him close upon 2,000 years ago. And what is that lesson? It's this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. That saying is still there. Thank God it didn't come down yet <laughs> at, Rock at Rockefeller Center. I've seen it before. But you know what? What more can we ask for? What more can we ask for from Jesus Christ? Everyone in this church, especially our young people, the Lord loves you, the Lord will always watch over you, and he will always protect you. No matter how you dress, with a mask <laughs> or your natural self or a costume, the Lord loves all of you in this church today, and remember that. Because you know why? He created you, and he doesn't create junk. Remember that. <laughs> Let us stand and now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious and loving Father, let us present our needs and concerns before you this day. The response to our petitions will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he will thrive spiritually and physically, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For civil servants who labor to maintain clean water, dependable power, and reliable communications systems, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor to father in the harvest, that they and their important work be appreciated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders who have lives dedicated to public health and safety, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are living with terminal illness, may they always feel God's love, care, and compassion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For life to be respected in all forms, from conception to death and every moment in between, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those in our parish who are preparing to receive or have received the sacrament, may they be guided by the truth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayer request received by our parish's ministry of prayer to be heard and answered according to God's holy will, and we pause now to remember our own personal intentions in the silence of our hearts. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in Christ to rest in the peace of our Lord, including Marie Kieschel, Theodore Baker, Jacqueline Bruda, Helen Wilkes, and we pray especially for this morning's Mass intention for Teresa Rinkevich. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And especially during this month of October, we turn to our Blessed Mother, asking her intercession upon all of us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As the gifts are presented at the altar, please join in singing For the Beauty of the Earth.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And with the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For, it, for you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, for whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in that Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. time he was betrayed and entered into his own passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The mystery of faith. death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and lay faithful. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we might merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King, our glory is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give to you. Look not in our sin, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace to everyone viewing at home. You too, Deb. Behold them who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should have turned from my roof, but I'll only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those praying at home and act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
During communion, please join in singing, We Are the Light of the World.
And before we conclude, <coughs> excuse me, we have to thank our third grade. They did a wonderful job today, and all they did... They even took up the collection. I wish you could keep up, but Father Brian would be... <laughs> <laughs> and to thank Jackie, their teacher, and especially Lennon Sharp for coordinating the faith formation. And thank you guys so very much. And please tell the youth again, have a wonderful time, fun night, but please be safe. And don't forget to come to the parish for hot dogs and trick-or-treats and all that from 4 to 8, right? 4 to 8. So please come to the courtyard here and have a wonderful and safe time. And be safe. Let's pray. May the working of your power, O oh Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day, everyone. You too, Father. Please join us sing our recessional hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. That is Pat Martin, our organist and music director.
Oh, look, it's Sister Joni. <laughs> <laughs>